Hello, I'm Lauren Key. I'm a SharePoint engineer and a qualified teacher of 12 years. In this video, you will learn what is a SharePoint team site, the basics around team sites, and how to create a team site in SharePoint Online. So first of all, what is a SharePoint team site? A SharePoint team site is a public or private space specified in an Office 365 group which allows you and your team to share and collaborate project documents, content, information, apps and ideas. Tasks can be coordinated, versions can be controlled, and privacy and permissions can be managed throughout the team. Most team sites are made up of document libraries and lists, of which can store various team files and data. Additionally, team sites provide you with the ability to turn your site into a Microsoft Teams channel. This is beneficial for sharing files, quick team chats via the messenger function and video me call meetings. So to create your team, you need to go to portal.office.com. We need admin rights to the tenancy to be able to create the team site. And if we have these rights, we'll be able to go to SharePoint and click the Create Site button. Once that's opened, you have the option to select a team site or a communication site. Within the team site, as you can see here, the description says that you can share documents, you can have conversations with your team, you can keep track of events, manage tasks, and more with a site connected to the Office 365 group. So we're gonna click that. We are going to name our site. Is that one available, not available? Okay. We are going to set the site description. And then you will be given the option to select whether you want your team site to be a public, anyone in the organization can access this in this, this site, or a private site where only members that you have provided um, permissions to can access the site. For this, I'm gonna click private. You can select language, English for me is fine. And then you're gonna click next. Now, depending on whether you've clicked public or private site, uh, you will give, be given the option to add additional owners and members to the team site. I don't want any additional owners for my site, but I'd like to add some members to it. For now, I'm just gonna add two or three. Okay, and as it says here, you can also add more people later if you wish. And thereafter you click finish. So what's gonna happen now is SharePoint is gonna go away and in the background it's gonna create and deploy that site. Uh, what I've done though for you is I've created an example here for us to look at today. So now that the team site has been deployed, let's have a look around at what functionalities we have to use. So instantly in the site header, we can see whether the group is a private or public group and how many members we have in our team site. I have 11. On the left hand side here, we can locate pages simply with the quick launch menu and these can be edited or moved around accordingly. As I said earlier, team sites provide you with the ability to turn your site into a Microsoft Teams channel and underneath my um, video here, there is a button that says create team and that can be clicked to communicate with your colleagues in real time by creating your team site for your Office 365 group. Now looking at the main screen here, 
We can highlight important uh, information through visual images and company branding. And this can be done using the Hero web part. We can access team documentation quickly and easily using the quick links. We can learn and understand what meetings you and your team have coming up. And this is done using the group calendar web part. To learn more about how to implement and configure the group calendar web part, do look out for my quick watch video called how to implement and configure the group calendar web part in my YouTube channel, Lauren Key IT. So here we can share uh, news to your team with the news web part. We can provide a document library for all team documentation. And we can display the status of our projects using Planner. Now, as you can see here, I've used the status chart function. And you can see that there are eight tasks left on my projects that need to be worked on. Five have not yet been started. Three are in progress, none are late, and three have been completed. Or you can use the board function in Planner to plan, manage, and visually track tasks and assignments. And these buckets can specify what stage the project is at and what tasks need to be done to complete the projects that need to be worked on. Tasks can be assigned to staff members and the team can easily see what tasks are in progress or have, or have yet to be completed. Tasks can be clicked off, sorry, ticked off and rearranged depending on the up and coming projects that are happening. To learn more about how to implement and, do, and configure the planner web part, do look out for my quick watch video called how to implement and configure the planner web part on my YouTube channel. And then lastly, you can enlighten your team with what recent activities have occurred in your projects using the site activity web part Information that can be displayed in this web part are documents stored in the site and any page updates that your team has made. So to complete, conclude today, you have learned what a SharePoint site is, team site is, the basics around SharePoint team site and how to create a team site. Again, if you wish to delve deeper into the planner and group calendar web part, do visit my YouTube channel, Lauren Key IT, and search for those two quick watch videos that I've created. Bye for now, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video.